Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, again, nice to see some new faces on the board. And today we have Mariana and Aisha from BART to talk to us about the hopefully exciting plans for um, the 40th Street underpass next to the BART. So, um, Mariana, take it away. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here with you guys tonight. Um, so my name is Mariana Pajeres. I'm a project manager with BART. Uh, my job is to advance station access projects. And so primarily bicycle and pedestrian access projects. And, you know, I don't have a particular jurisdiction within BART. If it's a, an access project, I probably have my hands in it. Uh, and this is one of uh, a portfolio of projects that we have in the works right now. And I don't no, this project has been going on for a number of years, and some of you may have seen it before. <laughs> um, so this is going to be an update. Um, but the good news is that we found funding, and so now we're going to build it. Uh, so that's the good news. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I have, um, I have a PowerPoint that I'm going to show you guys. It's very short. There will be plenty of time to, um, for questions. And while you're getting that pulled up, I'll just jump in real quick. Could everybody mute themselves? I hear a little bit of background noise. If everybody could make sure they're muted. There we go. Thank you. It was, it was a really interesting sound that was going on. <laughs> I'm not, not sure what it was. <laughs> not your usual like kids screaming, you know, that kind of stuff. All right, so this is an update uh, on the what we're calling the MacArthur 40th Street Underpass Safety Improvement. And I'll give you a quick background for where this all comes from first. Um, agenda, quick recap of where we're coming from, the design components, so two different kinds of lights, uh, the status and the schedule, and then the next steps that we're, um, we're going to complete. Um, so in 2016, the BART board adopted a station access policy. And it had a lot of, you know, these very lofty goals, but they're in, in the really, you know, small nutshell, what the station access policy says is that we really want to invest and support pedestrian and bicycle access to BART stations primarily. You know, the, the BART system was built in the 60s. Um, we opened for service in 1972. I know because I am as old as BART. Um, and, you know, it was anticipated that people were going to drive, they were going to park their cars, and they were going to take the train. And so a lot of our stations are surrounded by parking lots, and not a lot of thought was given, you know, to how things might change or how other people who are not driving might want to access BART. And there's been a ton of development in the last uh, several decades, and it's surprising, um, I think, to a lot of people to know that more than half of the access, access trips uh, to BART today are walking trips. And you know, part of the reason for that is because we have these downtown stations where people are walking to BART. That is really the best way to go. But even in the, you know, the outlying more suburban stations, uh, people walk a fair amount. And sometimes people walk quite long distances to BART. Uh, and so we really want to support that, elevate, pedestrians and cyclists to the same level of treatment that we have given you know, other, um, other folks uh, and get even more people walking and biking to our stations. So that's basically what the, what the station access policy says. And here is on the left is the hierarchy of access mode that is included in the station access policy. So you can see that we really mean it. We are putting pedestrians at the top of the food chain in our access policy. And also in 2016, we passed, and to those of you who voted for it, thank you, uh, bond measure RR, which uh, gave BART $3.5 billion to improve and upgrade the system. And I'm sure you know the system really needs it. But of the, the 3.5 billion, 4%, uh, which is 135 million, is reserved for station access projects. And this is the breakdown of how we have been investing those $135 million. So we can see that the majority of the money goes to bicycle and pedestrian access projects. So the active modes, uh, some amount of it goes to shared mobility, which includes buses, um, TNCs, pickup drop-off, 
all of that is bundled into Sure Mobility. Uh, we have some amount of money specifically set aside for ADA improvements, you know, people with disabilities, um, some special kinds of access. And then we have a small slice of the pie, which we did reserve for investing in driving and parking. Because at some of our stations, you know, the, the majority of people do drive. And, you know, sometimes we have to put some money towards that. But really, the majority of this money uh, is being invested in uh, walking and biking a BART. So we have those two things, and that's the background for these um, access projects that we have been advancing. You know, BART has never actually had a pot of funding like this to use for this kind of purpose, but now we do, and so we've been doing that. So we quickly identified the underpass at MacArthur as a high priority project, and I don't think I have to explain to you why. It's dark, it's dangerous, it's grimy, it really needs some love. Uh, it's the, you know, one of the primary access paths for pedestrians and cyclists uh, to the station. It's also where a lot of the, uh, the buses and the shuttle operators want to be because it's really, really close to the station entrance. Uh, but, it, you know, it's really not safe. And so, like, for example, the Amory Go Round really wants to be using that curb, but they really would like it to be safer for people who are waiting for, uh, for the shuttle. And so we identified this project and we started advancing it with two goals. Top priority, to improve safety for pedestrians and bicyclists and people waiting for transit in the underpass. But also a priority to create a sense of place. And so in other words, we don't want this to be just a white light uh, kind of a project. We want this to be special. We want it to be memorable. We want people to know that when they see this underpass, they know exactly where they are. Uh, they are at 40th Street uh, and adjacent to the MacArthur Station. We also want this project to help stitch the neighborhoods back together a little bit. You know, the I, I've done a little reading on the history of the neighborhood, and Temescal used to be a much larger neighborhood, right? So you guys on the west side of the freeway used to all be part of the the broader Temescal. And then, you know, came the freeway and came BART and really split the neighborhood uh, and divided the neighborhood and made it very difficult for people on either side to go to, you know, to go to see their neighbors on the other side. And I, I you know, I walk and I ride a bicycle and I, I know exactly where the points of crossing the freeway are uh, because there aren't that many, you know, you can't cross just anywhere and you have to do these big loops to cross. So we really want to make the crossing experience uh, better here. So what we're designing uh, is a scheme that has primarily two kinds of lights. White lights that we plan to have oriented downwards, and they are the lights that are going to provide that, like the level of lighting that you need to be safe and secure. And I have it here on the slide. I don't want anybody to freak out about this facial recognition. We're not installing cameras to recognize people here. What we're talking about is sufficient level of light that when you're walking in the underpass and you pass by someone, you can see their face. And, and, you know, and that is what provides the safety and security uh, in the underpass. But the other kind of light that we're planning are going to be dynamic color lights. that are gonna be oriented upwards. And they're the ones that are going to create a sense of place. And we're also considering um, an optional set of lights that would cast a sort of like a linear effect on the color lights. And, you know, to me, they add some degree of texture. You know, the underpass is very flat. The surfaces are very flat. There's not a lot going on. But when you add this linear effect, then, you know, something different happens there. And so um, these are the two, you know, the two primary components of the, um, of the scheme. Now, we have developed um, some concepts for what this dynamic light show is going to look like, okay? Uh, and right now, we have uh, two concepts on the table. The first one we're calling the companion theme. And what that is, is um, a, a light show that might give you the sense that there's somebody walking with you. And so, and I'm gonna show you this because I have a video. So 
hang in there. I know it's difficult to picture. As a matter of fact, when my consultant was describing this to me, I did not quite picture what they were trying to express. And so it wasn't until I saw it live um, that I, I understood what they were talking about. So first, first um, scheme is the companion theme. Uh, the lights are going to be changing on the ceiling, on, on, on the wall, and there's going to be this idea that somebody might be walking with you. Uh, the second scheme we're calling the creek bed theme. And what it does is it speaks, you know, to the past of the area, to the marshland that used to exist and the network of, you know, canals and rivers uh, that covered this area before we all came along and developed it. And so, you know, the colors are different, the schemes are different, the, the light show uh, is different, uh, but those are the two things that we are considering right now. And they don't, you know, there's no finality to the scheme that we're going to put up on the wall because the lights are programmable. And so we will be able to program them uh, with different themes in the future. So for example, if, you know, the Warriors are playing uh, and we want to, you know, celebrate that, we may put up some blue and gold on the wall. If, um, if it's, you know, June and it's Pride Month, uh, we may put something like a rainbow on the wall, like that. So it, you know, it's not whatever we decide to put up to begin with is really not final. Uh, we will have the ability to reprogram the lights. So uh, I want to show you this video and um, what this is, what, what you're looking at on this photo here is that as part of the design process, we are installing what we call a mock-up of the overall design. And so all it is is a small section of what we intend the overall design to look like ultimately. And we're doing this because we wanted to test the equipment. We wanted to test the installation. We wanted to refine the design. So, you know, when we when you actually have to go and install the thing, that's when you discover, you know, all of the details of the design that you would otherwise have missed. And so we have actually installed some lights on the wall uh, to test them out. The mock-up is not completed yet because we also want to install some sheet metal that is designed to protect the lights. And so we're going to have an assembly that's going to cut, you know, it's going to come and sort of wrap around the edge of the light along the top and along the bottom. And what that's going to do is it's going to protect the lights from vandalism. It's going to hide all the cables. And it's also going to protect the lights from pigeons, which we know are a problem over there at MacArthur. And so what you see here right now is a partial mock-up because the sheet metal is not up yet. Um, but we did get it up to a point where we could program the lights and take a look. And so now I'm going to switch my view here to something different. Um, so you can see this video. Okay, so you see my black screen. So I, I kind of feel like this should have added music to it, but it doesn't. So what you're gonna see is uh, a video of the lights of the two schemes. And there's gonna be a little bit of text at the bottom that's gonna explain sort of the concept of what you were seeing. So the first one will be the companion theme. Is anybody musical? Can anybody add the soundtrack? If, if it looks like the vehicles are moving really fast, it's because this is twice the actual speed of the lights. So.
You have to imagine the entire underpass displaying um, this light show. So this is the second theme, the creek bed theme. Maybe you can narrate for us what we're seeing here. <laughs> you know, what I like about this, this one is that it represents water in different ways. And so, you know, there's like shimmering water, running water, rain. And, you know, when you read the story, you really kind of get the sense of what it's trying to do. Did you say this is a simulation or is this actually a small sample of the lights? This is just a small sample of what the overall installation is gonna look like. This is about 30 feet, but we're going to, you know, the project covers the entire underpass on both sides of the street. And so, you know, we will make decisions about um, what portion of the day the, the dynamic lights are going to be on, but, you know, they'll be on the majority of the day and perhaps just during the hours that the, that the station is closed, we would perhaps turn off the, the dynamic lights and leave just the white lights on all night long. So let me stop sharing now. Oh, I can go ahead and go back to my presentation. So when we were programming the lights, it was June and it was Pride Month. And one of my coworkers was helping, he's actually standing right there, um, talked to his supervisor and she's like, why don't you put up a rainbow? And we were like, that's a great idea. Let's put up a rainbow. And we ended up leaving the rain, you know, the rainbow on um, for the rest of the month. And we, you know, we publicized it on social media, on Twitter and stuff like that. And people were really, really excited about it. The, the rainbow was very, very popular. So that's, you know, that's a clear contender for a future like June installation. So this is where we are. We have received um, $1.8 million in funding. Um, and that comes from uh, two grants uh, under the Affordable Housing and Sustainable Communities um, grant program. And what that is, is something that um, affordable housing developers apply for, but it has to have a housing development component and it has to have a transportation component. And so BART frequently partners with the developers on these grants. And we have been historically very, very successful with these grants. 
And this year we received um, six awards out of eight applications and two of them were uh, for this project. And so that was hugely exciting. Uh, we also applied for a Clean California uh, grant earlier this year. And that's the one that you guys helped us with, with a, with a letter of support. Uh, we were not successful, uh, but I can tell you that the list of projects under that grant uh, program looks really great. And uh, I really think that the only reason we were not successful is because of how limited the scope of work is, uh, because that, that program was looking for uh, many different kinds of beautification and including things like landscaping and stormwater management and, you know, um, uh, litter abatement and stuff like that. And, you know, underpasses are specifically listed under the program, but our project really was strictly a lighting project. And so I think that was the reason. Uh, but no matter, it was a good exercise. And, uh, you know, if other opportunities come up, the grant is basically written. So that's okay. Uh, and in our design is at about 50% completion. And so what we have left to do is first, we're gonna complete the mock-up installation with the sheet metal. And then we are going to program the lights and we are going to put out a survey and we're gonna gather some feedback on the two schemes. Um, and so I will definitely notify you guys when that happens. I'm hoping that can happen within the next couple of months. And that will, you know, wrap up the mock-up uh, phase of the design and we'll be able to com complete the design. Uh, we are expecting to be done with design by the end of the year. Uh, and then after that, we have a couple of things that happen concurrently. We start the procurement process, which at BART is very long, uh, but we also need to apply for an encroachment per permit from Caltrans because the lights are all going to be installed on the walls in the underpass. And some of those walls are BART walls and other walls are Caltrans walls. So we have been having uh, several conversations with Caltrans to make sure that we understand what their requirements are, what they're gonna look for in the encroachment permit so that when we apply, we'll get it. Uh, and then we're expecting to start construction around summer next year. And you know it's a relatively uh, limited project. We think we'll be done in about six months. And so hopefully um, by the end of um, 2023, beginning of 24, we will be done and the lights will be on. And that is what I have for you guys. And I am ready to take your questions. Great, thank you. That was a really informative presentation. So um, I have a couple questions from that people have given me, but I can um, feel free to put a question in the chat if you want, or if you would like to speak, um, we can, you can go ahead and unmute yourself and um, ask a question. Anyone want to ask an Yes. Do you want us to raise our hands? Hi. Sure, you can uh, You can raise your hand. I always forget how to do it in Zoom since I'm a Teams person now. <laughs> I have that problem. <laughs> uh, I don't think I'm seeing anyone raising their hand. Well, my screen is blocked right now. This is Akan. Hi, Akan. Hi. So... My only question, because I do use that that uh, underpass, and it's one of the longest, I think, ac access points in the Bay Area. So it gets pretty dirty. Use the yeah. word grimy, but I mean, it yeah. is. I'd rather use the word filthy at times. Yeah, I hear you. So when this starts, they will keep it more clean, right? That's an excellent question. Um, and that's a real challenge. Um, okay. okay. BART can't um, do work, basically. It's a city street, right? And so uh -huh. we we do a little bit of, of trash pickup on the BART side of the underpass. I know it's not sufficient on the other side. I was out there the other day. It's, it's quite, uh, quite dirty. Yeah. Um, you know, I have wrecked my brain trying to think of ways that we could do something. Um, the the Emory Go Round has an interest in um, collaborating with BART and with City of Oakland on ways to 
try to keep the underpass cleaner. We have just started having a conversation with them. We haven't taken it very far yet, but we will definitely continue because we absolutely have an interest in collaborating with them. Um, and then the other organization I have approached on this has been the, uh, the Temescal bid because they, um, they actually have a good vehicle for um, cleaning the underpass if they, if they could spend money in the underpass. The challenge with uh, having them support is that um, the bid is a, like a legislated thing and it has a specific boundary. And the bid boundary right now does not extend into the underpass. And so what that means is that the bid cannot spend their money in the underpass. But you may know that they do things like, you know, power washing telegraph app. And so, you know, they, they basically have the tool in place uh, for doing it if, it if we can figure out um, how to pay for it. And so um, what I can tell you is that I will leave no stone unturned um, with regards to trying to clean up the underpass and keeping it clean. Uh, but I, I, I do not have the answer. I do not have the solution yet. Can I, can I ask you about suggesting there are three entities involved, I think you would say, um, Caltrans, BART, and the city. Why not look at the three partnershiping on this certain specific project? Yeah, I, I would like to be able to, but the reality of all of the public agencies is that they are typically so stretched thin that they just can't. You know, I also tried to get City of Oakland to collaborate with us on maintaining the lights themselves, but I really got nowhere with that. <laughs> and then, you know, I, I understand because we have the same kind of situation at BART. So, you know, one of the things that they explained to me was that usually they have like a certain budget for their, you know, electrical maintenance for the year. And um, because people are tapping into the power for the street lights all the time, they usually run out of budget by about February and you know their fiscal year ends in June. And so I get it because we have similar challenges. It, it doesn't stop us from trying um, and we will keep trying. That's all. Oh, yeah, I, I think what I'm saying is this is a very specific situation. No, I understand. And, and proposals are for specific situations. And I don't Akan. see why. Yeah, let's, I let's we have a there. lot of folks with their I would hands like to, I would like to redirect us to um, some lighting specific questions. We all have our concerns about the safety of the underpass, but let's um, let's try to address any lighting concerns right yeah, now. Okay. Um, and then I, save I, time. I, I, will, I will end like this, but you know, it is unreasonable for me to think about there's going to be a strong lighting project and you're not going to have the place clean. Right. I, and I think we all I, completely I am, agree with that. I think we all completely agree with that. So let's make sense. Okay. Okay. So um, Larry, do you have a question specifically about the lighting project that was just presented? And if so, you can unmute yourself. Yep. Well, it's not really specific to that. So I but I would Okay, like so to let's hold your question till the end. Let's see. Um, Joanne, do you have a lighting question? I mean, I agree with everything that, you know, Akan has mentioned, but I'm curious, like, is there research or evidence or past projects that indicate these kinds of lighting improvements making a measurable difference in safety? Yes, yes. I mean, I, I can't cite it off the top of my head, but certainly lighting uh, is a critical, critical component of, of safety. For sure, and you know we are also implementing um, new lighting at several of our stations, which are really quite dark. Um, pedestrian scale lighting is not something; it's one of those things that basically got left out when the system was built. You know, we have light in our parking lots, but we don't necessarily have lights on our sidewalks. And so, yes, absolutely. Well, do you have any statistics you can share about? Like, it sounds like have there been past lighting projects implemented that are similar to this? Like, can you speak to any statistics on like improved ridership or decrease like incidents in terms of crime? Like, is there any sort of measurable impact? I don't have any specific data on measurable impacts. I see, okay, thank you. Is that something that you could maybe follow up with and we could put it in our newsletter next month for a follow-up meeting? 
I can, I can try. I can try. Okay. That we'll, we'll give you that. The trying would be great. Okay. Yeah. Having that would be, would be really helpful. So, um, uh, let's see who else. Um, I think Jean, you had your hand up. I can defer to others. I know there's a, a few other hands raised. Okay. Um, and so Larry's was not specific to lighting. I'm looking to see if anybody else has a hand raised. And I have a couple of lighting specific questions. Um, so one question that came up recently in our neighborhood Facebook group, let me get to it, uh, was specifically about um, you know when the largest building was going in at the MacArthur uh, station, there were funds pledged for an underpass lighting or underpass improvement project. And I think they may have been on MacArthur, yeah, on MacArthur, not on 40th, but do we know where those funds went and if those are being utilized for any projects, safety projects here? My understanding is that those funds are with the council member. And I would follow up with the council member. I do believe those funds are specific to Wes MacArthur. Okay. And I believe that they're intended for art. Okay. Um, but I think that Dan Kalb is, is the, the right person to ask about those funds. I don't Thank think you. they have been, I don't think anything has been done with those funds yet. At least I have, not that I'm aware of. Yeah, well, no, we, we know nothing's been done with them. So we just wanted yeah. to make sure, yeah. um, you know, that it was, it was being, uh, being addressed. So let me, I'm sorry, let me get to my chat. I, someone gave me a private chat. Let me get to that question. Um, I think Rosanna and, and company oh, Rosanna, have, have your hand up. raised. Hmm. Hi, yeah, this is Raphael. Great, oh. present, great presentation, by the way. Thank uh, you. And, a, and just a quick shout out to Mr. Boyd. I really agree with that. My question about the lights, is um, will any treatment be done on the center island that's between the two, you know, be between both sides of the street? Yes, yes, we will. Um, there, again, there's BART jurisdiction and there's Caltrans jurisdiction. So if you think of the underpass, the center section uh, that's closest to the station is a wall with some openings, some square openings. Uh, and that's BART, that's supporting the aerial structure. And so in that wall, on that wall, we will have lights. We will have the, the color lights as well. Thanks. I miss anybody else's hand raised. Um, I see I've, Roland. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I was wondering about pigeon abatement. You mentioned pigeons as a problem and just in terms of keeping the lights from deteriorating, uh, uh, if, if there is any technology available to uh, kind of diminish their presence. I, I wish we had something magic to do about <laughs> the pigeons, um, but it really comes down to preventing them from going in the places where you don't want them. <laughs> and so BART uh, has had a pigeon ab abatement program um, that's been ongoing for a number of years. And so you, if you use the BART system a lot, you may see that in some stations we have nets, which okay. don't work very well because holes happen in the nets and the pigeons get in. But then we have other stations where we have actually essentially closed the openings with wire mesh and the wire mesh is very effective. And so, you know, there, I, I've looked into all, all possible things. Remember, okay. well, I, I can, could you please mute yourself? have any transportation. Jane, can you can you do the muting? <laughs> oh, and just a, a okay. follow up question, if I could. Um, there's a mural of dragons on one side of the, the uh, underpass. And I'm just wondering if the lighting will interact with that or if that's going to be wiped out. I think it's been uh, graffitied from time to time. I don't know what its status is right now. Yeah, you know, I actually just researched that um, recently. Um, so the bottom portion of that mural has been painted over because it's had a lot of graffiti on it um, several times. Uh, the lights are, the current plan is to bring the white lights above the mural so that they shine down on the mural. So, you know, the, the mural is basically in the line of fire for the lights if, you know, if we don't do anything about it. So we'll put them up above. Uh, but I also found out that 
that mural basically had a lifespan that is sort of ending right now. And so I don't know, um, I don't know if the city has any plans to, you know, essentially give up the mural or restore the mural. Um, so I don't really have the complete information on that, but uh, there is some information out there about, you know, what it was and who painted it and how, what the lifespan was, expected life, lifespan was going to be. Great. So, and on the topic of art and possible, you know, and we know this is a lighting project, but you know, there was a lot of discussion of a sense of place of this project in 2016, with the survey and during various Mm -hmm. iterations of, of information on this. So um, we had a question about how, how I understand how the water one is a sense of place and with the relationship, I don't know that the companion one is, but also, um, you know, there have been things that have been discussed around what should be memorialized there, specifically mm -hmm. Nia Wilson. Mm -hmm. And so um, if you have any other additional information about you know, sort of the lighting and how it interacts with the neighborhood and what has happened at the station? That's a good question. Uh, the project actually started before that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we didn't have, didn't particularly have a thought towards that. Uh, the project currently does not include art per se. Uh, we are calling it a lighting design. And there's a real reason for that, which is that the moment that we call it art, we have set ourselves back by years because Caltrans requirements related to art are a whole other ball of wax. And we did not want that to slow us down more than we are already slow. Um, but that does not mean that art cannot be added um, at a later date. Um, there's a lot of wall there. Um, and there are many other opportunities and obviously the West MacArthur um, underpass as well and the money that has been set aside for a project. So we are, you know, we're not precluding the possibility of future art. Uh, we're just not including it with this right. project because we want to get it done. Yeah, it's, it's been going on for a while. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's see, along the lines of long-term maintenance, we heard about this project early on that we're going to do it, but we don't necessarily have money for maintenance is has maintenance been what's the the, the lifespan of the project and maintenance uh, we, bart is going to maintain this project when the okay. underpass was when the when bart was first built the lights that were in the underpass were connected to bart power uh so they were bart lights and then in 2008 the city of oakland came and implemented a project that was actually intended to do the kinds of things that we are trying to do now, but it didn't really work very well. So, you know, the lights that exist in the underpass right now were installed by city of Oakland, um, and as, as well as the cloud design that's on the wall. And, uh, and so the, those lights are connected to city power, uh, but we're basically gonna take it back. We're gonna connect it to BART power and, um, and the, light, the lights are gonna be uploaded into our asset management inventory. And as such, they're gonna become part of regular maintenance, just like any other light in the system. Great. And Larry, I haven't forgotten about you. I'm just gonna get one more question in about lighting before we come back to your question. Yeah, so I, have, I have one. Okay, Akon, we'll come back to you after Larry then. Um, so uh, the, oh, um, you know, you gave us a description in that film of the what the lighting represents. Will there be a description component of the lighting att attached to it so people walking through the underpass can understand either the companion or the water theme? I hadn't thought about it, but we can do it. I'm sure we can do that. Great. Um, um, you know, we have we have some. Um, some frames on the wall on the plaza that typically have advertising, um, but we have, I have connections. Uh, I have connections. We could, we could put something up. Great. <laughs> so I think, I think I, I think I can say that. Okay. Yeah. Just a thought so that people understand. Yeah, no, you know. it makes, it makes sense. I completely agree. 
Yeah. Okay, great. So, um, yep, I know you're there still, Jean. <laughs> Larry next, then Jean, then we'll go back to a con unless I've missed someone in the messages. So go ahead, Larry. Thank oh, you. And Scott's again too. <laughs> Thank you for the presentation and Mariana's answered much of my question. I simply wanted to underscore the need for comprehensive maintenance because when the city put up that lighting, which was actually 2003, over $100,000 was allocated for graffiti abatement. And what they did was they put an anti-graffiti coating on the walls. The idea was that then the graffiti could be washed off, scrubbed off, or power hosed off instead of being painted over. But nobody thought to tell the city departments that do that maintenance. Nobody communicated. Nobody made sure everybody was on board. So what happened the first time graffiti came up there, they came out and they painted over it. And that 100000 dollars of taxpayer money was wasted. There was never any return from that. So I just want to make sure that for this lighting, that it's not just going to be a maintenance nightmare that, that the wrong people are, are working with. Is the city going to come out and think they still have to maintain lights or whatever? There needs to be coordination. Yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. No, the city's not going to come out and try to maintain it. I promise. I promise. Um, they have worked with us. They know what we're doing. They support it. They also gave us a letter of support. And uh, their maintenance group has come out and, you know, disconnected the power for us so that we could do our mock-up installation, all that kind of good stuff. So uh, they're on board. Um, and, you know, I used to have a different life before I was a transportation planner and engineer uh, and a project manager at BART. And uh, I actually worked with anti-graffiti coatings. They are also uh, not super magic. It's very difficult to get one of those things to work. I, I know the product uh, that they were talking about is a wax-based product that is supposed to melt basically with hot water, uh, but then it has to be reapplied. And so there's, you know, there's no easy way. Um, I do hope though that having the underpass better lit uh, is going to go at least a little bit of the way towards avoiding the problem because, you know, people writing graffiti on walls don't want to be in well-lit locations, you know, they want to be in dark spots. So a good reason to keep it lit the whole time and <laughs> not turn it off during. That's true. Um, okay, Scott, you're next. And then Jean, I promise. Oops, unmute. Yeah, I think Mr. Boyd was next. Oh, oh, uh, I'm letting people you're, who you're, haven't had a chance to speak yet speak. Okay. Well, you did switch it around. I don't know why. He's right, but go ahead. No, go ahead, Mr. Boyd. I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I, I'd just like to hear a, a little more specificness about the lighting in the Meridian strip. Will it be white light there also? No, it'll be only the dynamic lights because it's not actually a walking path. It's not a sidewalk. But sometimes people do walk through there. People do walk in the median? That's right. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, That's sometimes where they cross. I think it would. I think I think it would be more complete if you did do it that way. Um, that that's more money. <laughs> um, you know what? I, we don't want to get into that. Okay. Well. I, All right. I'll I'll deal with it with you. But I'm saying, you know, it's easy to say that. You know, because you know. Well, we don't yeah, want people to walk in the, in the way that yeah. people wanted to, but if they were really caring about the community, they would make sure that everything in that environment was balanced. But we don't want people to walk in the median because it's not a sidewalk. It's not intended for that. It doesn't have enough Okay, space. let's don't get into that if you're not going to. I won't, don't, I'd rather not hear that. Go ahead, next person. Thank you okay. for your question. Scott, if you. Uh, Mariana, thank you very much for a, a very enlightening and I would say creative vision uh, for, for the underpass. Uh, I, I look forward to it because uh, I use BART regularly and I travel at times at night, or maybe more frequent, frequently than I should. but. Anyway, the point I'm, I'm like Mr. Boyd, I'm, I'm talking specifically of, let me clarify, is that 40, is, a, is the 
outside that of 40th Street where the concrete seats are? Is that part of BART or is that somebody else? That's that's adjacent to the BART station. So that wall is BART. Okay. Uh, you know, that is a, as Mr. Boyd reflected, it's a mess. It's an, uh, you know, it's, any, any, you can't sit on those concrete benches because the birds have, have left their mark. Uh, people have left feces on the sidewalks. You know, I've not seen a maintenance crew from BART cleaning that sidewalk or cleaning those benches. It's, 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 it's awful. Yeah, yeah. The street itself is I'm city. I'm talking about the sidewalk. The sidewalk is city jurisdiction, so, not part. May I say this? But it you is. know, you wait a minute. Uh, you know, I. You know, uh, then you're telling me that we should be getting over, getting on Dan Cal to get that the sidewalks cleaned more regularly. It, and, I and guess it couldn't hurt. <laughs> it couldn't yeah, hurt. So the walls. To be clear, the walls are Bart. The yeah. sidewalk and the street are the city, and then the walls on the other side and the posts and the median are Caltrans. Okay. Yeah. So Not uh, let me let me be clear. I, what I'm talking about too are the concrete seats that are there for anybody who walks on the 40s. 40s. And so are, those are also city of Oakland. Okay, so we need to. Oh. Maybe. So we should start C click fixing it and really put let's let's make a concerted effort as a community to try to. Um, you know, I don't take BART very often anymore and I bike through there, so I don't see the streets. Um, so let's try to make a concerted effort to see Clicks Fix, which I have been doing recently that has um, really, you know, they're yes. paying attention right now. So I think that would be really helpful. Okay, so, thank you. For and we can put that, we can put something about that in our newsletter so that we can get um, get some traction there. Great. Um, yeah. and, Donna, and Donna, I'm yeah. sorry, this is Asia. Real quick, and so the reason why I'm here with Mariana, supporting Mariana, I just want to interject, is part of my role in supporting her and her efforts is to be that community liaison. So if there are things that, that you see at the station that need to be addressed, I'm the person that you can share that with. And I'm going to drop my email and my phone number in the chat for everyone. And Donna, you can share that with the group. But I am the community liaison for the station. So I can work right. with Mariana and the team and our maintenance folks to make sure that this our role and, and our, our part of the station is clean. So that's what I'll share. OK, Thank you I have another question uh, with regards to wh whose property is it that's at the corner of 40th and Martin Luther King? That's a vacant lot. I believe that property is actually Bart. Oh, it is. It's, it's, you know, I, I, I that's what I heard, and I know there's been some conversation about. Has Bart decided what they're going to do with that empty lot? No, we haven't. We're in conversations with um, the council member. We've met with the council member a couple of times recently over the last six months, and to visit the lot. There's a lot of conversations happening right now. But as you know. Bart has some other priorities and that lot has been vacant for numerous years. <laughs> yes, yeah. we recognize and, that. And yeah. I can speak to Scott, uh, the board, the LCA board had a conversation with Dan several months ago about um, that lot. And we are, um, we are trying to support efforts for a temporary thing there. And we are hoping to roll that out um, at a meeting when a, when something has been decided upon. So it is, you know, we've, we've had many discussions over the years about that lot and hopefully we can uh, make some progress on it soon. Okay. So Jean, please ask your question. Thank you, Mariana, for the presentation. This is really exciting. And, and I think we're all really looking forward to these improvements. And one, one small question I had, is the, the dimness of the, of the lights something that can be adjusted at all. They, they seem kind of dim to me still. And I'm wondering if that's you know an option to turn them up or? That's a great question. So um, yes, they're programmable and they can be dimmed. And one of the things that I personally learned, learned with this project, not being an expert in lighting is that it is actually more difficult to make it light mm -hmm. enough in the daytime because what happens is your, your eyes are, you know, you have this bright sunlight that your eyes adjust to. And what that does is it makes the underpass seem darker because your pupils are like, you know, tiny. And so working on the contrast between the light and dark is one of the hard parts. Um, but 
but they they can be adjusted and so we will have the opportunity to make them brighter if that's you know if that's what we need cool well yeah and i just wanted to echo the the concerns about maintenance i think we're just all you know so demoralized i mean that's just such a sad walkway and it has been for so yeah. many years and and we're just afraid that there's going to be this big you know fanfare and then it's going to go back to dim lights and graffiti and trash and just you know yeah. so i think i'm hopeful you know but i really i'm glad that you're talking about how it's going to be incorporated into the bart asset management system that's great and and now i i hope that we can continue the coordination with the city to get it you know make sure it's clean and make sure that if those bulbs go out they're replaced and that we don't just slide back to this depressing and scary corridor again. So yeah. I'm hopeful, I'm really excited, and I hope that we can make sure that maintenance is a priority. Agreed. Thank you. Okay, Scott, did you have another question or no. your hand was just still up? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. That's okay. I just wanted to make sure there wasn't another question. And then I think I had one more question in the chat that I now need to scroll through to find. I apologize. Um, uh, sorry, I'm scrolling, scrolling. There's a lot of messages in here, people. Mm -hmm. I, we're passionate about this. Um, okay, so it was a question about if specific thought has been given to how to increase safety in the corridor leading to and from BART as those paths are high crime areas. So is there anything beyond the thought of um, lighting makes us feel safer, makes it less vulnerable? Mariana? There are um, BART cameras in the underpass. And when we improve the light, then the cameras will see better. And so hopefully that's also a, t a deterrent. Um, with regards to BART police, we're kind of damned if we do and damned if we don't. Some people want more police and some people want less police. But as with um, you know, the, the sidewalks, the street itself is not BART jurisdiction. And so it makes it very difficult for us to spend BART money, you know, policing streets. Not, I mean, we're we're trying to. We have done a lot of um, surveying of our riders regarding, you know, their experience in the system, and and we know that safety is a really top priority. Uh, we're we're trying to spend a lot of effort um, improving the safety on the platforms and safety on the trains and you know safety in the stations. Um, so you know, it's a long list of things that we are trying to address and. If we could, we would most certainly be in the underpass as well, but it is city of Oakland jurisdiction. So um, it would be um, o OPD jurisdiction. But we hope that the lights, you know, the lights will improve the safety and they're going to allow the cameras to see better as well. Thank you for that. Um, we are approaching our hour here. Are there any last questions or if I missed anything in the chat? I see I, Scott's hand up. I do have a, a, a follow up oh, question. Great. Ma Marianne, is it, did I understand it's possible to increase the, uh, the brilliance of the lighting in the underpass at night to, to, to increase the lighting, the intensity of the lighting? Yeah. Yeah, it is possible. It could, it, to me, it seems like it could be much brighter at night. We, we have to, so again, we have to be careful not to create contrast because that's, that's the thing that, that but creates. But you're talking about daylight. I'm talking about nighttime. But nighttime, the same thing, right? So if you have, if the underpass is super, super bright, and then you walk out from the underpass where you have a much lower uh, okay. level of lighting, that's problematic as well because your eyes, you know, need to adjust between one and the other. And you know, the important thing is that we want people to be able to see each other and not have that glare problem one way or the other. So that's why I have a lighting designer on the job because that's that is their expertise. Okay, thank you. Hey, thank you. Well, Mariana, Asia, thank you so much for coming and sharing this project with us. I know 
Um, the pro project sounds exciting. We have a lot of other hurdles to uh, get over with making sure that uh, you know safety happens and that the underpass stays clean. <laughs> Where that's a high hope, um, you know, and uh, I just lost my train of thought. There was something else that we need to make sure happens there. Um, but uh, I think that hopefully the lighting project will help to, um, you know, move us towards those things. So I, I hope so too. And I really appreciate the opportunity to come and talk to you guys today. Yeah, thank you. And Asia, we're very happy to have your contact information now. <laughs> absolutely feel free to you know if there's graffiti or if your station is just dirty email me great thank you very much and um you know originally i had said we could stick around and do a little check-in but i'm sure everyone is uh looking forward to the uh getting on with the rest of their evening but um you know if you're if you were new here thank you for coming to a meeting and we hope to see you again <laughs>